My guest today is only 19 years old, but a lot of established entrepreneurs will be amazed at his talent, skills, mature thinking, high goals and determination. His name is Martin Dimitrov and he is the inventor of Snap Clips. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Where did your uh, family come from and how long have you been living in Chicago? Uh, my family is from Bulgaria, from Rusay, Bulgaria, and we've been here for about 17 years. Who do you want to uh, become uh, in your professional career, an employee or an employer? Um, yeah, I, I don't want to be an employee. I've been an employee for a little bit um, in a previous job and uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with being an employee. It's just not what I want to do. I want to be an employer and I want to have the freedom and everything else that comes with being an employer. Uh, including the risks <laughs> and uh, responsibility. Exactly. Tell me what happened during the uh, entrepreneur uh, class in your uh, high school in Welling. Yeah, so that's where it all got started. You know, we, we had the task to come up with 10 problems that we had every day, and then we had to figure out a solution for one of them. So our teacher said, you know what, this is what you have to do. Go figure it out. You know, here's about two weeks to do it. So I had gym class right after, and we were lifting weights, you know, in the weight room. And You uh, liked sports. Yeah, so I've played sports since I was little. I'm a black belt in Taekwondo. I used to wrestle and I played football. So it's always been a part of my life. And, uh, you know, we're lifting weights and we're switching the weights from the uh, bar, you know, putting more, taking off. And then I hated using the spring weight collars that they have in there. They're just difficult to use. They're, you know, not very safe. Half of them they are like, broken. They're on, all over the floor. So I thought there has to be a better way to solve this problem. Mm -hmm. So, and then the idea popped into my head of the... Uh, slap bracelets that kids used to play with, you know, you basically... How long did it actually uh, take for you to come up with the idea? Um, well, I came up with the idea over the course of probably like two weeks and then okay. to actually develop it, I mean, we're still working on it, so it's been almost four years. Can you show us how it actually works? Yeah, so pretend this is a barbell. Yeah. All you have to do is you take this, clip it onto the barbell, lock it down, and then once you're done with your lift, take it off and you straighten it out. It's that easy. Well, it really looks very easy and very uh, convenient to me. I'm sure people that are, uh, like uh, weightlifting will be um, it's a very, very nice surprise for them. Yeah, we've gotten an awesome response so far. I, as soon, people don't notice it's a problem until they see the solution, and, and then they they realize, they're like, oh wow, you know, this is really cool. Do you have enough feedback? Yeah, we, we've been getting awesome and it's, feedback. Most of it is positive. Yeah, positive yes. feedback. And if, if there's any not completely positive feedback, it's, hey, can you do this to make it a little Slight bit better? Slight improvement. Yeah. So, and that's, 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 even, that's almost even better than just the positive feedback because it helps us get better and it helps us. Well, bring. that's called constructive criticism. Exactly. The spring collars usually aren't that safe. When I'm focusing on squatting 500 pounds, I don't want to be thinking about, am I going to die when I'm squatting this thing? It's especially important for me as a powerlifter to be able to have something that's secure and keeps me safe when I'm under that weight. The things I like about the snap clips, the convenience. They're super easy to put on, just slap it around the bar. The number one priority is safety. The weights don't even move when I put them on there. When I show up to the gym and I look at my gym bag and I don't have my snap clips on me, I mean, I basically just don't even want to lift anymore. I mean, it really is true. Once you go snap clips, you never go back. I'm sure that was not the initial product he created. No, this was the initial product was the bracelets that, you know, the kids used to play with. It's, okay. They came with hearts and Spider-Man and everything yeah. on them. We took them out of the packaging and then we put five of them together. And then that's what we used as our first prototype. Did it work well? It... It didn't work as well as these worked, but it worked well enough to show me that there was something there. Potential. There was something more to explore there. Did you protect it uh, by a patent? Yeah, so we applied for a provisional patent in my um, senior year of high school. And then after that, actually my junior year of high school, we applied for a patent. And then my senior year, we did the whole process of actually getting a non-provisional patent. That's the real utility patent. That's the best one that you can get and uh, we had to pay extra money to get it done in one year compared to three years. So you years. have the best protection for your uh, product. Yeah. Have you ever dreamed of being on the uh, famous TV show Shark Tank? Uh, yeah, you know, it, it was always something that I've thought about and something that people have told me to do. Um, but I didn't have the desire to do it because I heard that they used to take equity in the company just to be on the show. And I didn't want to just give up equity. It didn't sound like a good idea to me. 
Um, and then I found out that this wasn't the case anymore. And the way that it actually happened was I was going around the whole Chicagoland area, just meeting with gym owners, uh, coming in there and saying, hey, this is who I am. This is what I developed. Mm -hmm. um, can I show it to you and you know, see if you like it? And a lot of them thought it was awesome. It's a really cool idea. And they said, I mean, you're impressive. You should go on Shark Tank. Yeah. So after I heard that, basically every single time I talked to someone, mm -hmm. it kind of started changing my mind. Like, okay, maybe if, if all these people are saying it, maybe there's something there. And how did it actually happen? Um, so after, so we did a Kickstarter also. A Kickstarter is like a crowdfunding campaign. Basically, you, mm -hmm. you give your idea, you put it on the internet, you make a whole like web page about it. And then if people like it and are interested, they buy it before. And then you send them the product a couple mm -hmm. months later. Mm -hmm. So... It's funny because I thought it was going to take like two or three months and it ended up taking 18 months to really develop it. So some people were pissed off and they thought we were, you know, taking their were money. Were you successful or in your online com campaign? Were we successful? Yeah. Yeah, we were extremely successful. We did three times what we were trying to do. Okay. So it was great and it, it was perfect because it gave us that, you know, validity that mm -hmm. people really wanted a product like this. And it also gave There's us some confidence money. in the product. Yeah, it, it gave us enough money to pursue it further and start manufacturing and fund the patent as well. Okay. But actually, how did you end up being on the show? What, what happened? Yeah, so after we got our orders in, after 18 months of developing and doing all the different designs, it was a, at a point where we sent out all the orders and we were getting good feedback. But, uh, you know, I was trying to decide what are we supposed to do here? Do we go retail and try to get into like Dick's Sporting Goods sale. and all those stores? Or do we do distributor to try to get them to, you know, get us into retail and other gyms? Or do we mm -hmm. just go online and try to sell directly to the customers? You're, you're at a crossroad. Exactly. And I was, one of my mentors, his name's Patrick Tanous. He founded a very successful company called Tiesta T. And uh, he told me, you know what, try to go find someone in the industry and try to get them to help you because, I mean, they have all the contacts. It should be easy. Mm -hmm. And I talked to a couple of people and they weren't giving me, you know, the best uh, deals. Mm -hmm. So I, I was looking for something else, you know, the, the, we didn't You're find the right You're looking for fit. a better deal. Exactly. And he said, you know what? figure out when the next Shark Tank casting is. I'll fly you out there on my own dime because I know that you're going to make it. Like, I have no doubt. Well. And I said, okay, sure. I looked it up. That was, that was a Friday. Mm -hmm. I looked it up, and then the next casting date for season nine, which is the one that we did, was the following Monday in Boston. It was the mm -hmm. last one of the season. There's no more. So this was, like, the only opportunity to do it. Mm -hmm. So I called up my best friend. I'm like, hey, we're going to Boston right now. I'm coming to pick you up, and we're going on Shark Tank. He's like, okay, let's do it. So we drove, I think it was like 16 hours from Chicago to Boston overnight, made it there on time, barely made it on time. Right. And, uh, you know, we, we were, I think, like the eighth person in line. Mm -hmm. So we did that, you know, went there, pitched. Um, I didn't think I did really well, but apparently they liked it. Were you actually worried on the set? No. I mean, it was cool because I got to see the sharks before we actually pitched them. So it, there wasn't that initial shock value. I okay. got to go and check out the set, make sure that everything but was still, good. But still, to be in front of such a big audience, mm -hmm. TV audience, and in front of uh, uh, celebrities, famous and uh, wealthy celebrities, investors, mm -hmm. it, it's not so easy Yeah, for I mean, the first time. I, I've done it, I've been around, you know, successful people before, and I've, I feel like I'm pretty, you know, well, I can But not billionaires. Not a billionaire, yeah, not, not yeah. yet. And uh, it, it was just in the mindset, you know, you have to go okay. in there knowing that you're going to do well, knowing that you're going to get a deal, mm -hmm. and you create your own reality with your mind. You seemed very confident when I watched the, the episode. Mm -hmm. I had to be. And uh, were you actually happy with the deal you made? Yeah, it was awesome. So I went in there, I knew that I was going to get a deal with Mark Cuban and A-Rod, mm -hmm. and, you know, having Lori come in was even better. It was Perfect. That was a bonus. Yeah, exactly. Can you remind our viewers uh, who was on the set, who was on the, the panel? So we had Alex Rodriguez, uh, Mark Cuban, Lori Grenier, um, Barbara Corcoran, and Robert Herjavec. And the actual deal was 150000 in exchange of... Uh, 30%. 30% of uh, equity. Mm-hmm. Alex, you bring your gyms in? I, I am in if he stays in school. I agree. I'm not doing this deal unless you stay in.
right, deal. Done. All right. Done, done, done. Great. Great deal all the way around. Nice job. Thank you. Nice awesome. job. Being your Partner. It. Thank you. Congrats. Smart. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. And what happened after that? We're still working on the deal. It's uh, we're still working on some final, you know, little issues. But uh, yeah, it looks like it's going well. So hopefully it does go through. Uh, who was your favorite shark? Um, I mean, I guess everyone would probably say Mark Cuban just because he's so successful. Not necessarily. Who was your favorite? My favorite? I, I don't know if I have a favorite. I, I'd like to say that I like the three that picked me to do a deal with. So okay, it's fair enough. Yeah. What are your ultimate goals with this product, Snap Clips? Uh, my ultimate goal is to have Snap Clips in every single gym in the United States. It's, uh, I think it's something that we could really do, and it, it's almost to expand it nationwide. Nationwide, and then eventually globally into the global market. And I mean, global fitness market. is only growing. People are being more healthy, and uh, not only in every gym, but in every person that you know lifts weights and works out and is serious about working out. Mm -hmm. um, it's something for them. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, have you thought uh, about uh, different applications, different areas? Yeah, there's a lot of different applications. We, I haven't even thought of all of them. There's so yeah. many. So uh, we're exploring some different applications with wires and uh, you know, fastening them together and storing them more easily. How do you feel now? Do you feel as a famous person, as a celebrity? <laughs> No, I, I don't really feel like a, a celebrity or anything. I haven't even, I've just been so busy. You got so a lot busy. of exposure recently. We, we did. I, I, I've been so busy. I can't, I don't even have time to really think about it. It's just on to the next thing. You know, what are we doing now? What, what's the goal for this year, next year? Do people recognize you in the gyms? Yeah, people recognize me. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's kind of weird because, you know, everyone kind of knows you now. So you got to, you're walking around and people are looking at you. You're like, oh, okay. It's, but it's cool. It's uh, it, it's definitely better than not having anyone know you. I know that your uh, father is uh, in Bulgaria and your mother is uh, here in Chicago. Yeah. How are they perceiving your initial business success? Um, I mean, they're very happy, you know, to see me, you know, doing well and doing what I like to do. So they're very happy and they're they're doing everything that they can to help me along the way and do anything that would make it easier for me. Were they so optimistic in the beginning when you uh, told them the idea? Um, I mean, I don't think they knew that it would get to, or they yeah. thought that it would get to yeah. this far, but uh, they were very supportive and they didn't have any negative things to say. What would you recommend to people who are not so confident as you are, but uh, they want to start their own business using their own original ideas? Mm -hmm. So if someone isn't uh, you know, confident or doesn't exactly know what to do um, in a certain field, they should go, uh, first of all, decide what you want to do, pick what, you, what you're passionate about, what you like doing, and what Passion won't. plays an important role. 100%. You have to be passionate about what you're doing. Well, because then it doesn't feel like work, and if you're not working, then it's fun, and it's like a game. So pick something that you like doing, and then either figure it out by yourself or go work for someone. Go work for a, a big company or a medium-sized company that mm -hmm. does it really well and figure mm -hmm. out from the first step to the last step how everything is done. And after that, you can go out and do it on your own and you can just replicate that process, but not only replicate it, but make it better. Thank you for being on the show. Wish you success in your business. Thank you, I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me and uh, definitely we'll be on here again.